Hello YouTube, and tonight we have Annie Oakley out to play, and she's having a blast, but we want to welcome you to our, our third episode of Color Genetics. Uh, if you haven't watched our previous episodes on the A locus and B locus, I would recommend you go back and watch those prior to watching this one. It'd be very, very important for you to, to understand what's going on at these two points before we proceed into to the C locus. So the C locus is only, uh, has more alleles than the A and B locus. Um, I have them listed in order of dominance from the most dominant, which is a capital C, and then down to the most recessive, which is a lowercase c. And we're going to talk about each of these in distinction here. So, full color. That's going to be uh, basically, um, there's no modification that takes place at this particular uh, locus point. Uh, you're going to see a capital C in your blacks, uh, in your uh, black otters, okay, uh, your um, chestnuts. Those are all going to be full color uh, with a capital C at this locus point. Uh, now, re remember, just as in other previous locust lessons, each rabbit has two alleles at each point, okay? Uh, the only one that you can visually see is the one that is most dominant. So you could have another, you could actually have another C here or you could have a, uh, you could have a, uh, any of these other four following behind it, but the only thing that you're going to see is the full color. Okay, the uh, next one that is, it is less dominant than full color, but more dominant than uh, the one below it, is the one that we call CCHD, or also known as the chinchilla gene, uh, or allele. The, uh, this, this allele is responsible for what you're going to see in chinchillas. It's also, uh, what, what it actually does is it removes orange shading from, or orange pigment from the hair shaft. So if your rabbit has any orange on it, it's not gonna, it's not gonna be, this is not gonna be the most dominant gene. If this is the most dominant allele at that point, at the C locus, orange shading is removed. And that's why we see, uh, in what we see in chinchilla, it's also what we see in silver martin. So if you have a tan, uh, you know, based, tan pattern based rabbit that carries the uh, CCHD as the most dominant gene, which is what we'll see, you're going to get silver martin, okay, which is just below black otter. So black otter is more dominant than silver martin. Or chinchilla, uh, if it's an agouti rabbit, you, then you'd have chestnut, then you would have uh, chinchilla. Okay. Uh, next one down, which is kind of in the middle range in this order, uh, is what we're going to refer to as the shaded allele. The shaded allele is responsible for your sable points. It is responsible for your Siamese sables. And it's also responsible for seal, uh, which is just a little bit different color than a black, but they can look almost identical, but, but if you look closely and you look at the parents, you'd be able to tell that it's a seal color. And it's just, it's just a hair shaded different. You, you, if you put a black rabbit next to a seal, you'll notice the difference. <clears throat> uh, next up, we have what we call the Himalayan gene. It is responsible for your pointed blacks, your pointed blues, uh, what it does is it pushes all the color to the points of the rabbit. So you're generally going to see a little bit of black on the face, ears, uh, and then black feet. Okay. Uh, the rest of the rabbit will remain white in color. 
So we're just taking all that color on the rabbit and moving it to the points, hence the name pointed black in the such. And lastly, we have a lowercase c, and that lowercase c is going to be responsible for what we call ruby-eyed whites, or ru, R-E-W. Uh, some people refer to them as rues. I call them ruby-eyed whites, you know, or red, uh, some people call them red-eyed whites. Uh, but what this 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 uh, lale is doing is it's basically masking our rabbit in nothing but white and re in removing all that color and hiding it. Uh, it will override. So when we talk about uh, ruby-eyed whites here a little bit later, and I show you an example, I, I want to explain how this works. The only way that you can get a ruby-eyed white is if you have two copies of this gene of this allele at the C locus. Okay? You have to have two copies of it. If you do, you know, every every locus point gets two different alleles at each point, two genes. If this gene is by itself with any of the other four, you're not going to get a, a ruby-eyed white. But if you have two copies of this, you'll get ruby-eyed white and it will basically eliminate whatever else happens on the string. Okay? It won't matter whether it's a goody or, or black or chocolate or anything. This, this allele right here is responsible for ruby-eyed whites. It does not matter what happens prior to or after this point at the C locus. And that's why uh, it's very important, uh, and we're going to talk a little bit more here in a little bit uh, about how useful these can be uh, and, and, and how, how to create them. Okay, but again, each parent, if you wanted to create one, each parent would have to transmit this C, this, which would mean each parent would have to have uh, at least one copy of it to transmit to a kit. Okay, all right, so what we're going to do, and I've been showing some examples of, of, the, of what we're looking at in a couple of these, these um, videos thus far, and, and this, thus far, and I'm going I'm to show you again today uh, some of these examples. Now we're going to do the genotype for each example that uh, I'm going to present to you today uh, and kind of give you an idea. So if you've watched the A and the B locus, you're gonna, we're going to use the color that we see and we're going to develop that genotype based on, on our example. And we'll go from there. Okay, uh, so stay tuned. We'll be right back with this on uh, the next part.